Welcome back to Elementary Statistics. In this video, I want to talk about linear regression. The idea of regression, or sometimes called trend fitting or line of best fit, is the process of finding the equation to represent a linear correlation. The correlation gives you an analysis of the data, but it doesn't give you a tool for prediction, or at least not a very strong one. Regression is the process of turning that data into an equation. You can plug in the value of your independent variable and calculate the value of the dependent variable. It's important when you are looking at a regression or a best fit line that you already verify that your correlation is statistically significant. You see here that I already have data on the screen this is data that I analyzed in a previous video, and we found that there is a negative linear correlation. It's actually a perfect negative linear correlation, but the important thing is that it is statistically significant. And because it's statistically significant, we can write an equation. And I copied over not just my x and y values, but the rest of the table, because it turns out that the x squareds, the y squareds, and the xy's are also important in trying to write out the equation of the trend line, the regression line, however you want to call it. So let me get my head out of the way. And I actually need a little bit more data that I didn't want to copy over just yet because it would be awkwardly behind me as I was addressing you. But the thing we really need are all of those sums. The sum of each of the columns, we need all of these values. You should remember from a previous course in algebra that the equation of a line can be written in any one of several different forms. The one that we care about here is that y is equal to a times x plus b. Very often when you see this form in algebra, you use the letter m where I have the letter a because that has a specific property about the line. I'm not worried about that here. In statistics, it's traditional that we just take all of our parameters that we're trying to figure out and label them alphabetically. So our goal is to figure out the value of A and figure out the value of B, plug them in, and we will have our line. Before I start writing anything else down though, I want to again stress that we have to make sure that the, um, that the relationship we're looking for has a statistically significant correlation. If it does not, we can still do this calculation and it will be completely meaningless and useless. But we know that this particular set of data has that statistically significant correlation, so we can go ahead and do the calculation. These formulas look just as ugly as the formula for R. but the value of A is sigma y times sigma x squared minus sigma x times sigma xy over n times sigma x squared minus sigma x the whole thing squared. B is n times sigma xy minus sigma x times sigma y all over the same denominator, n times sigma x squared minus sigma x the whole thing squared. Just like we learned when we were calculating the value of R, we know all of these things. And in fact, because we had to test whether the correlation was statistically significant or not, we already calculated all these things. It's just a matter of plugging everything into the formula. Sigma y is 15. Sigma x squared is 55. Sigma x is 15. Sigma xy is 35. 
n is five, sigma x squared is 55, sigma x is 15, and we square it. This is an easier formula to work with than the formula for r. I can do the numerator all at once, 15 times 55 minus 15 times 35. My calculator tells me is 300. Five times 55 minus 15 squared, my calculator tells me is 50. And 300 divided by 50 comes out as six. I'm just going to slide this formula out of the way so that I have enough room to calculate B using the same process. B is going to be five times 35 minus 15 times 15 all over five times 55 minus 15 squared. My calculator is happy to do the calculation in the numerator, which is negative 50. And the calculation in the denominator, which comes out at positive 50. So all told here, minus one. And so, now that we have our values of A and B, we said that Y was going to be equal to A plus BX. In this case, Y equals six minus X. Fairly straightforward relationship. And if you graph, y equals six minus x using techniques that you remember from an algebra class. Let's try that a little bit skinnier. That's a little bit more pleasant. You get a line that looks like that. If you plot our data from this distribution, you get five points that fall exactly on the line. So that worked out very nicely indeed. This is a poor example of the next thing, but there's one last thing that I want to mention before I wrap up this lesson. We have in this entire discussion kind of sidestepped whether the relationship that the data is actually presenting is linear or nonlinear. We assumed that it would be linear. Unfortunately, we haven't had a way up until this point to determine if the data is nonlinear or if it is linear. And so to show you what I mean, I'm going to look at another set of data. I'm not going to take the time to verify that the correlation exists. I'm not going to take the time to calculate the regression line. I'm just going to write out a couple of terms. So again, I'm not going to make you watch me go through the calculations again. I don't think it's interesting to watch that many times and this video is going to be long enough as it is. But here I have another set of data. X values, one, two, three, four, five, and Y values to go with it, 1.0, 1.9, 2.7, 3.4, 4.0. That means that uh, decimal numbers going through and doing the calculations is not going to be fun, but it's certainly going to be doable. It turns out that this distribution has an R value of 0 0.997, which is statistically significant. So we reject the null hypothesis. We accept the alternative hypothesis. We say that this is a um, 
correlation that has predictive power. We figure out what the equation of the line is going to look like, y equals 0 0.35 plus 0 0.75x. And I can even go so far as to graph these things. Uh, I've done this in computer software instead of trying to do it by hand so that you can get a better picture of what's happening. And at this point, we start to maybe question things a little bit. Uh, this line's a little bit too bold. Let me make the line a little bit less bold and get these uh, points to stand out a little bit more. And what I notice here is that the points are kind of not quite following the line, which is perfectly fine. That's usually the case. It's rare that the points land exactly on the line. But what I notice with this is that at the extreme ends, we're below the line, and in the middle, we're above the line. And that's a little bit concerning. And so there's another idea we can look at, which is called the residuals. I'm going to add two more columns to this table. I'm going to add a capital Y, which is going to be the value from this formula. So I take x equals 1, I plug it into the formula. I get 0 0.35 plus 0 0.75 times 1, which comes out at 1.1. I plug in x equals 2. I plug in x equals 3. I plug in x equals 4. And I plug in x equals 5. And all of these values are different from the values in the data. Again, that by itself is not a problem that very often happens that the values themselves are off from the, um, the model. But what can be interesting and is something that we should watch out for is the residual. How are they off? If I take the Y value from the situation, and I subtract the y value from the formula. In this case, I get negative 0 0.1. I get negative 0 0.05. I get positive 0.1. I get negative 0 0.1. 1.9 minus 1.85 is positive 0 0.05. 2.7 minus 2.6 is positive 0 0.1. Then I get positive 0 0.05 and I get negative 0 0.1. And what I want to do is plot x versus the residual. I'm going to go ahead and just do this by hand. Actually, let's spread that value out a little bit more. And when I plot these values, I get an interesting pattern. I don't get something that looks like noise. 
And because of that, I start to question, did I choose the right model by saying that this is linear? I'm not going to go so far as to say that you should do a statistical analysis on the residuals to determine if they are a statistical correlation or not. That is not something that I think is valuable. But it's always worth checking and just asking yourself, does this graph, does this distribution look like random noise or does it look like a systemic pattern? If it is a systemic pattern, then there's a good probability that the data you are graphing is not actually linear. If the residuals are noise, then the data you are graphing is certainly linear and you don't have anything else to worry about. Right. Again, for our purposes, we're not going to worry about what a non-linear regression looks like. It is something that can happen. And if you continue on in your study of mathematics, you'll study it in more depth. For right now, just knowing that it is a thing is good enough. I'm going to end the video with that. As always, thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time.